loading up on bug spray because it's tick season. Got a number four heavy field load here. I just put in a, a full choke. What's up guys, welcome back. It is the opening day of the spring turkey hunting season here in Southern Ontario. We're going to be hunting uh, the Crown Land, my local spot, the uh, Beverly Swamp area, um, about 10 minutes from where I live in Cambridge, Ontario. So I've made it to this back corner of uh, Crown Land here. I've seen a turkey in the field just right over there. And there's a road right over there where I've, I saw a turkey crossing the road. And this was in the last about three weeks that I saw these birds. And I've been hunting around here for, uh, for crow because they're actually pretty good table fare. I, uh, I started doing some calls back there and I was kind of surprised. I, I was, my t call was being returned by, I believe another female turkey, a hen, basically doing the same call as I was. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, then it seemed to, uh, to move away from me as I was, making my way forward, I found a pile, a large pile of turkey feathers. Good morning. It's a couple of days later. We're headed to uh, another Crown Land property just down the road from where we were filming the other day we're gonna catch uh, first light hopefully we're gonna get a gobble today hopefully we're gonna get a turkey
was cool. Big beautiful doe. I'm uh, proud of myself the way I was moving through the woods. Super quiet. The doe couldn't tell if I was another deer or what I was. And I kind of pushed it back a couple times, 10, 20 yards. Then finally I got close enough and she's just standing there broadside right in front of me. That's really cool. Well, I've seen uh, turkeys in that spot a number of times in the fall, but it's really swampy right now. I'm not seeing any turkey sign. So we're gonna head back to uh, to the location we were filming at the other day and we'll, uh, we'll try sneak in there and see if we can have some luck. Well, this back corner of the property is just a sliver of forest with fields on both sides. And as I mentioned the other day, I've seen turkeys in this area a couple of times recently, and I found some, uh, some turkey feathers around. So I was trying to make my way back here as quietly as possible, doing a little bit of calling on the way. And, uh, I was doing a good job of that until I started getting pretty close and then I just kind of took the wrong path and started making a bunch of noise, cracking branches and so anyhow, um, basically just gonna hike out of here and I'm hearing a lot of crows. So maybe this will uh, turn into a crow hunt. They're, uh, they're pretty good eating. Looks like we got ourselves a crow. A little bit of excitement. Oh. 
So let's talk a little bit about hunting crows. Um, around here, um, south of Toronto basically, uh, it's mostly crows, but there are some ravens, which are considerably bigger. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Um, they've got more of a curved sort of hawk shaped beak whereas this crow has fairly straight beak um, ravens typically soar around kind of like a turkey vulture or something they they kind of soar like a bird of prey where a crow sort of paddles it's always paddling and then the real um, easy way to tell is they're they're cawing a caw, caw, caw. Uh, whereas a uh, a raven does like more of like a croaking sound. It's kind of kind of cool, cool sounding, but um, it's, it's different. So yeah, you don't want to. Uh, you can't um, shoot ravens, but you can you can shoot crows. And as I mentioned, they're they're uh, good to eat. And we're gonna uh, yeah, we're gonna cook this one up in this video. So. Yeah, cool. Something's better than nothing. Some benefits to uh, hunting crows, besides them being actually pretty tasty, um, they uh, it's good to get them out of your your hunting area because they're gonna they're gonna remember. If you kill a few of them, they're probably not gonna be hanging around so much, and they. Um, you know, they eat uh, some of the small game that we want to hunt and they eat like duck and goose eggs and um, you know, the, the farmers nearby will, will appreciate it. Um, and there's, yeah, there's just so darn many of them. So um, yeah, it's just, it's a win-win all around. Okay. Got some things I keep in the truck. A knife, some soap, napkins, some water. We've got a paper bag here to put the meat in. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the breast out and take the heart out. And then I'm gonna check out the, uh, the liver Make sure that looks good. There's the heart. And our uh, two breasts, not as big as the last crow I had. And the, uh, the liver, the liver looks good. I'll package that up nice. All right, there is no one here at this property just down the road. So I'm gonna do a quick tour around here, do some calling and just hope for a gobble. That would be so exciting right now. Just, just a gobble. That'd be amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna do a quick tour around here. We'll, we'll see what happens if we get a gobble. That'd be phenomenal. All right, let's make it to McDonald's before they stop serving hash browns. So it rained most of last night, and that has helped me today 
to uh, move through the forest quietly because it's dampened the forest floor. And then we've had a pretty good downpour in the last hour, which is uh, gonna make it a little bit difficult to, uh, to get a fire going for our little cookout. And I've just got a lighter to, uh, to get the fire going. I've got a very minimal cooking kit I'm getting quite hungry and it is time to eat some crow. But I would like to find some birch bark to make this fire starting easy peasy because it looks like I'll have no problem finding dry twigs and sticks. I just need some birch bark. Wow, I made my way to this tree because I remember passing by it in the past. So I knew it was here, but I did not imagine that I would get all the way here without coming across another birch tree. But anyhow, here it is. Apparently the one and only birch tree in this forest. As long as I just take off this outer layer, I'm not going to hurt the tree. So this is basically how the stove works, is I build a little fire inside there, and I just set my pot on top. And then I've got some backup sticks. Some of these will probably burn and just stick some more in there. Got all my twigs, my birch bark. And I'm just uh, testing out this, this pan because um, it weighs like nothing. It's like 10 bucks. And uh, yeah, we'll see how it does. So what I'm gonna do is I've got cooking oil in this flask. I'm gonna Put about a quarter inch of oil in there. And then in here I've got brown sugar, salt and pepper. And I'm gonna coat the uh, crow with that. And then we're simply gonna fry it up so that it's a uh, just well done. Cut into these breasts, see if they're cooked all the way. Oh yeah, perfect. The heart was delicious. Let's try the breast. Mm. Very good. A little burn on the outside. That's okay. Well, that's it for this video. If you got something out of it, hit that like button. Subscribe if you're not already, and we'll see ya next time.